Among all the places to visit in the U.S., Lonely Planet named this New York Borough 2015's best travel destination. Nope, not Manhattan or the Bronx. Sorry, Staten Island. Sit down, Brooklyn, because this year's crown jewel is none other than Queens, New York. Named the most diverse place on earth, in Queens, there's no shortage of cultures or cuisines, especially along the borough's famed Roosevelt Avenue. From the neighborhoods of Sunnyside to Flushing, Roosevelt Ave spans over 100 city blocks paved with flavors from every corner of the earth. And meeting me for a taste is resident foodie Jeff Orlick. So we're in Jackson Heights right now. Tell me about this neighborhood. We're in the cross section of the world. It's little India over here, little Bangladesh, little Manila, Thai oh town, God. one of the five Chinatowns. People say it's like a mosaic of cultures. Not a melting pot, but a mosaic because everyone has their own yep. section uh -huh. everywhere. Jeff is somewhat of a local celebrity. Hey man. What's up? How you doing there? How are you? Okay. Known for organizing Roosevelt Ave food tours for more than a decade. People here like to show off their food. And the first stop on this tour is China, specifically the region of Tibet, represented by the athlete named Little Tibet. There's a growing population of Himalayan people here, so we figured people would definitely come and try some Tibetan food. And nothing screams Tibet more than its native delicacy, Momo. <laughs> So these are beef momos, ground beef, onion, scallion. Do you eat it with your hands? It's gonna, you could. It's very juicy. So let me put a napkin it on my lap. <laughs> wow, those How are it? delicious. It's just a dumpling. It's like nothing crazy. It is, but the flavoring of the meat is so good. I'm not sure if we gave it to different cultures or we borrowed it from different cultures. Well, I'm gonna call them momos from now on. No more dumplings. Next up, a unique spin on a classic dish you'll only find right here in Little Tibet, Queens. So obviously this is a burger, but it's not your typical burger. It looks a little different. This is a Momo burger. The bun feels so light and fluffy. The bun, it's the Tingmo. It's made from scratch over here in the restaurant. Let's take a photo real quick. Momo burger. I love this cilantro instead of lettuce. It gives it so much more flavor. The onion's nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I got the chili. Ooh, it's got a kick. <laughs> this is like the majority of Jackson Heights. It's all okay. Spanish speaking. Mexican, Colombian, Ecuadorian. Just walking today, I probably heard at least six different languages and that was only like maybe 10 blocks. Leading us to our next stop, South America, characterized by a taste of classic Colombia. Corn is a common ingredient in Colombian cuisine, making arepas or corn cakes a country staple. And when it comes to arepas in New York, legend has it the arepa lady is queen. I've actually have had arepas before, but not Colombian ones. So how are these different? First of all, they're the best ones that you'll ever have. Okay, that's hey. a big statement. It's Colombian style. Cheese arepa is made from uh, corn flour, has mozzarella inside, so it's very fluffy, it's very cheesy. And then the arepa de chocolate is ground up fresh corn. So it kind of has like a slight sweetness to it, and it mixes with the saltiness of the cheese, and it's amazing. Alejandro, his mom is the sainted arepa lady. World famous. What is now a restaurant began as a local food cart operated by the Arepa Lady from 10 to 5 a.m. for more than 25 years. My mom in Colombia, she was a lawyer. She eventually was a judge for a while. So in order for her to be able to raise her children, she needed to do something where she could control her schedule. She still operates the cart and she still stays till 5 o'clock in the morning. How does it make you feel? I feel like I'm in Colombia. <laughs> We're right here in the American dream. This is delicious. Well, I love this, but I don't want to get too full because I think we're going to one more spot, right? Right. And where is that? We're going 10 blocks away to the other side of the world. For our final stop, we head east to the Philippines. So this is House of Inasal. This is probably the most modern Filipino restaurant in the area. The Filipino cuisine is a mixture of many cuisines, like the Spanish, Spanish influence. Japanese, and Chinese. So what is this dish? That's uh, sisig na bangus. It's marinated milk fish. It's deep fried and then chopped into pieces. Mixed with scallions, onions. It has soy sauce in that. 
Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Looks so good. How about this? That is chicken in a salad, marinated with soy sauce. There's a lemongrass in there, ginger, pepper, onions. Wow, this chicken's really good. Well, Ariel, thank you so much. I've never had Filipino food before, and I kind of feel like I'm in the Philippines. Just in one day, you can go to like eight different countries. I definitely get why people come here to visit. Welcome to Queens. <laughs>